All eyes are on his eyes, the eyes of a British accented man who the world has witnessed carrying out a barbaric act. The search for clues is intense, trawling social media sites, for example, and monitoring chat on Twitter between other jihadists and ISIS supporters. What has become apparent is the discovery of widespread support for what happened. There are really two different kinds of responses. One is jubilation. They are very happy that this happened. Um, they are congratulating each other. The other one is a more strategic one. It is people talking about um, the strategic thinking behind this particular attack. And they are saying, look, this is what happens when America attacks us. We will attack America. If America continues to attack ISIS, we will kill more people. One example was from this woman from London, who last year Channel 4 News featured in a film from Syria, settling into a life with ISIS alongside her jihadi husband. She posted this message on Twitter yesterday. Any links for the execution of the journalist, please? Allahu Akbar. UK must be shaking up. Ha ha. I want to be the first UK woman to kill a UK or US terrorist. Efforts by Twitter, YouTube, and other social media sites to prevent online access to the video are proving fruitless. ISIS's war is as much in cyberspace as it is on the ground. Channel 4 News has seen hundreds of ISIS-linked Twitter accounts directing their followers to a strategy document which explains how to manoeuvre around the block. Last week I came to this part of London to talk to a self-confessed jihadist who had publicly declared allegiance to the Islamic State and was frustrated about being prevented from going there. Today, in the wake of the beheading video, I've come back to find out if that has made any difference. But this is an innocent journalist. Are you condoning that beheading? I condemn wholeheartedly the actions of Obama and David Cameron. I condemn wholeheartedly the airstrikes that are being conducted by the Americans in the Caliphate that are massacring many Muslims. That's not the question I'm asking you, is it? That is the answer to another question, but not the question I'm asking you. And well, that question is quite simple. Do you condone the beheading of James Foley and that video? Well, I don't think it's productive to answer a question the way you want. I'll answer it the way I want, and I think it's better this way. I believe if we want to stop further uh, James Foley's, and at the moment we've got a man called uh, Stephen Sotloff, who is under the captivity of the Caliphate, and I think if Obama and Cameron were genuine in wanting to save this man, they would rethink their policies. This is also an area of London where James Foley's murderer may well have spent his formative years. The murderer is British, and the chances are he's come from London, and quite possibly from this area of London. When you saw him, did you, did it, did you recognise any features? Did you, did you have a clue as to who it might be? I mean, um, I haven't seen uh, the video in detail, but um, there are reports coming out that he perhaps was British. However, I would say that... But you must have heard his voice. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard audios of his voice, yes, right. he had a British accent. So, obviously, it's not surprising to see uh, that there are people there who have uh, different nationalities or are under the banner of the Caliphate and who are living there. But um, I think the question we need to ask is how do we stop this cycle of violence? That, Did that... he remind you of anyone that you might have met in the years? Not particularly, no. No, I mean, I didn't really recognise this person. Did you? Uh, no. Not at all? And did you? Not at all, no. Nothing? Nothing at all. Right. One person who may have a clue is a former hostage French journalist, Didier Francois, who was held alongside James Foley. He told me today that he thinks he may know who the killer is, but won't go any further. On release, he was warned, he said, by his kidnappers, there would be reprisals if he were to reveal details. And that meant other captives in Syria would be punished.